Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're stopping by my channel for the very first time, my name is Guken Doris Talleran Suma. I'm from Nigeria. I currently live in the UK. On this channel, I share tips on how to navigate life in the UK, especially as a new migrant. I'm a new migrant myself. I came in on a dependent visa a few months ago. So if you're new to the UK and you've been trying to juggle childcare and getting a job or you're trying to juggle studies and getting a job here are five easiest jobs that you can get on your student or dependent visa now the first job on my list has to be support work okay most people say that why is it that when everybody comes to the uk they want to do care care they want to do care jobs so if you know why you you came to the uk and you know you have your plans mapped out whatever jobs you lay your hands on at the start should not even matter so when you come into the UK, one of the easiest jobs for you to get are um, support work jobs. As a support worker, you are giving care to people who need support. It could be the elderly, it could be people who have special needs. You are giving support to them. So why this job is one of the easiest to get and so flexible for people who are juggling school and childcare is that there are agencies that you could register on and then you would pick shifts, bank shifts, when you're less busy i know that for students and people dependents who have children to look after you definitely will have to look for a job that is part-time and most part-time jobs though they are part-time like they will tell you to work in three days or four days like that in a week but then it has to be on their own schedule like you can't pick your own shifts for instance i'm working i get a job and i'm to work three days a week three days could be monday tuesday wednesday and then my partner who has the main visa also has a rotor between monday tuesday wednesday so how are you going to do it so the easiest jobs that you can get and will be will not interfere in you looking after your children or will not interfere with your studies if you're a student is support work being that you could get this job and it's not going to be a permanent job it's going to be a shift job where you can just pick shift at your own convenience just do it get your pay and you bounce and then for you to get a support job in the UK, you need to have some basic qualifications. Although most times the ones I've come across, they'll say no experience is required, but at least for you to stand out amongst those who are applying, you should have like a level one certificate in social care. And some will also talk about the MVQ, that is a national vocational qualification in social care and um, all that you know how you can draft your cv whatever experience you have even if it's it's not been in like a formal setting maybe you had a grandmother or a grandfather or an aunt or relative who was ill and you took care of them that could come in your cv you could apply for these jobs and you get registered with an agency you pick shifts when you can you work and you go it's so flexible second job on my list would be working as a cleaner yeah, so there are cleaning agencies in different parts of the UK. All you need to do is register onto those cleaning agencies and then you will pick shifts. They will notify you. Most times they notify you there's a shift here, there's a shift here. So there is one that I was just freestyling. I just wanted to, most times I just try to apply these jobs. Let me see that I'm doing the right thing. If I'm called for an interview, I know that I'm doing the right thing. Excuse me. Then when I'm fully ready to start working, I'm going to, it's not going to be a new thing for me. So I applied to this um, cleaning agency. It didn't even take up to 10 days and they reached out to me. I wouldn't want to call the name of the agency. But if you're interested in getting a cleaning job around Birmingham and it's a virus, please hit me up on Instagram and I'm going to give you the name of this agency because they have so many jobs currently. What you do is, you apply to them they review your cv and if you're qualified they reach out to you they you guys schedule an interview they send you their handbook you read all that you need to know about cleaning like they tell you how you're supposed to present yourself at your client's house every equipment that is going to be given to you to clean how to use them their ethics and everything that has to do with the cleaning agency. So they tell you all that. So they give you all that info and then you get your first shift. This is also so flexible in the sense that you're not going to work full time. It's part time and most times just like three days in a week. So the reason why I didn't pick up this job was for two reasons. The first reason was my husband said, no, 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 no. <laughs> actually thinks it's a risky job because i'm going to clean 
uh, private homes. He said if it were offices, he would not mind, but this is um, residential apartment. So you know how it is. Someone could be having a bad day and decide to take it out on you and it's just you and the person. So he was not comfortable. He said I shouldn't take it. And the other reason was the fact that they said, okay, if I'm going to be working, say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it has to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every week. And then that's going to collide with my husband's rota. And it actually told me to get back to them whenever my schedule becomes flexible and I think I can do it. So if you're interested in working with this cleaning agency, reach out to me and I'll give you their contact, okay? That's number two. And the third easiest job that you can do as a new migrant who's on a dependent visa or a student visa is kitchen potter. Again, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things in this UK. I went on to Indeed and I saw kitchen potter jobs. I saw that they are part-time, most of the roles. I saw that they have a lot of part-time options. So, and then one distinctive thing I actually was seeing when I looked at the what they were looking for, the requirements was that you needed to have a level two certificate in food and safety hygiene. So I actually went on to Udemy and I took the level two certificates in food and safety hygiene. <laughs> I think I paid around 13 pounds and plus tax. That was around 15 pounds. I paid, I, I finished the whole course in two hours and I got the certificate. Now, if I want to apply for a kitchen potter job, I need to attach that to my certificate and also seat um, experience. You were cooking back home. Yeah. You were cooking while you were in Nigeria. You were cleaning, you were washing plates in the kitchen and all. So a kitchen potter job requires that you work in the kitchen of say a hotel restaurant or a normal rest just a restaurant and then you're maybe um slicing vegetables um, washing dishes taking stock of you know food items and condiments in the kitchen and all that and any other roles that the chef or people working in the kitchen who are your seniors will assign to you so that's what it requires if you're looking to get a kitchen a kitchen potter job i would advise that you take at least a level two certificate in food and safety hygiene because it's very important. It's very important because for those who are into the food business, it's one thing, a key criteria that you have to meet for you to, you know, be licensed by the government. They have to see that everything is up to standard and safe for people to eat. Another job I would say is an easy job for dependents and students here in the UK has to be teaching assistants. In the UK, you could work as a teaching assistant without any prior experience from where you're coming from. I would always advise from what I researched, you need to have like maybe a level three certificate in supporting teaching and learning in schools. Yeah, if you have that certificate, it's going to be easier for you to land a teaching assistant job. And, and there are so many of those jobs that are part-time. You could go online and become um, a private tutor. If you're good in math, you're good in English, or you're good in other languages, say Chinese, you're good in French, and all those other languages that are very important in our world today. There are always people who are looking for private tutors for their children. You can go online and check for a private tutor or a teaching, assist a teaching assistant job. Could apply to that and you will get it it's very flexible and easy to do next on my list is customer care representative the reason why i would consider this job a flexible job for those who are just coming into the uk and it's an easy job to do for dependents and students is the fact that you could work completely remotely there are some other customer care jobs that you could do from home you could pick nice shoes if you have children who are who cooperate a lot with you that they can give you that free space for you to work in the house. It's a very good job and easy job for you to get and to do as um, a dependent in the UK, being that you can choose to work night shifts when your children are sleeping, you can put on your computer and just do your job. So this is also an easy job to, to do or to get in the UK. And if you're someone who's very expressive, this is a good job for you to try out. Next on my list is warehouse factory worker. This one, eh, if you are, <laughs> if you know you have the strength, yeah, if you know you're strong enough, you can lift heavy equipment, you can lift heavy parcels, then this is a good job for an easy job for you to 
try out as a dependent or a student this also is one that is very flexible you can pick your shifts as for a student you will know when to pick your shift that is most convenient for you and the good thing also about this job is you don't need any prior experience especially for there are some warehouse operative jobs that they will say you have to have experience in um, there's this thing they call forklift how to use all that but it doesn't matter it depends on how you curate your cv sometimes most of these jobs in the uk they will state all of that but once you scale through you can learn on the job the last on my list is admin assistant admin assistant is a very chill job i'd say it's a very chill job i've seen admin assistant jobs that it's just like two days in a week yeah twice a week and one good thing about this job is that you can work also remotely if you're a dependent who has kids i would say it's better than um, a customer care because this one you're not speaking to anybody nobody's going to hear the noise at your background for you know um, if you have kids who are very loud and all for this job you're just doing some clerical tasks as would be assigned you in the company or organization that you're going to be working at so this is also, this is a very chill job for some you may re be required to go to the office for some you may not be required to go to the office but the hours for admin assistant jobs are actually um, very flexible so these are the few easiest jobs that you can start with as a dependent or a student visa holder here in the uk few quick tips i'll give that will really help you and i mean they will help you because for most of the jobs that i've applied i've seen and i've applied to they've reached out to me scheduled an interview and we've had talks and all that one thing I'll say, if for instance, you're looking for a care job, for example, instead of depending on Indeed, Total Jobs and all those sites, what you can do is just Google care homes near me. Take your phone, go on to Google and type care homes near me. The, Google is going to give you a list of all the care homes that are close to you. So you can now go onto the websites of those care homes and look, most of them will have the career section. Look out the career section. If they have any job openings, it's always there on their website. For me, I think it's even easier or best for you to apply for a job directly on the website of a company than through Indeed. Because if you notice, anytime you apply a job on Indeed, they will tell you that your application has been sent to that company. So Indeed is like a, a third party. So instead of you to apply for a job via a third party, why not look out for the company Look out for the company name on Indeed. Go onto your browser, search for that company, and apply for that job directly on the company's website. Now, for some care homes who do not have like a company policy where all applications must be done online, take a walk, yeah, to those care homes with your CV and tell them you're looking for a job. My husband will always say there are two things involved. It's either a yes or a no. Let me tell you one secret that I discovered. There's this app that is called ATS. ATS means Applicant Tracking System. So what this software does or what these recruiters and employers do uh, with this software is that if like 10 persons have applied for a job in a particular company, the hiring team will now use the ATS to sieve out CVs. Now what happens is for each job that you see um, online, there are like requirements, the skills that are stated that the applicants must have. So what you need to do is just go and look at those skills and tailor them, pick them up. Like you don't have to like pick that 10 skills. Don't pick all the 10 skills. Like it's going to be a red flag. You could pick like seven, eight of those skills and now put them in your CV. So when ATS is like saving off CVs, yours is like going to match the skills and requirements that you've stated for that job. And then you're going to stand a chance for being invited for an interview. So by the time you don't do this, for instance, um, a company has like 50 CVs or 100 CVs. Don't think that people are going to go through those recruiters or the HR team is going to go through all of those CVs one at a time. Is that ATS, that applicant tracking system that they use to sieve out CVs? So if you have not been receiving calls for interview from all of the companies or organizations that you've been applying to, there's a 60% chance that your CV has not been scaling through the ATS system. Always look out for the skills that are stated in job job adverts and then 
tailor your CV in that line. Make sure that those skills are reflected in your own CV so that when the ATS software is being used to sieve out CVs, you will stand a chance to be invited for an interview. I hope that you find this video helpful and useful and timely as well as you go about looking for something to do in the UK. I just want to also re-emphasize that what you're doing at the moment in the UK does not matter if you know where you're going, especially if you're new into the country. Don't feel bad that you are doing things that are beneath you, especially if you came here on a dependent visa, maybe because of marriage or something you had to pack up leave everything you were doing to come here just think of things that you're going to do to upskill just you know your strength you know your skills you know what you're good at so while you're doing these mini jobs to put body and soul together upskill take courses do a lot of certification so that when you're settled your children are in school you're done with your program if you're a student you're going to go into the job market and get a proper job that fits you that fits your career prospects in life that's all that i'll say if you found this video helpful don't forget to give a massive thumbs up and if you have lived in the uk longer please i'd love you to share um, one or two tips in the comment section things that we could do as newcomers to have a better stay in the uk i'd really love to hear from you in the comment section thank you so much for watching my video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel I will see you in the next one. Bye.